Hi, and welcome to What The Heck, where today we'll be answering the question, what the heck is a monostable circuit? Well, I'll tell ya. So, as is the case with a lot of redstone contraptions, it's useful to first visualize it as a black box. This particular black box has one input and one output. As you can see, the input is on the bottom and the output is on top. Doesn't really get much simpler than that, so without further ado, let's see what it does. So as you can see here, the input is a button, and if I go ahead and click that button, well, unfortunately you can't really see what's going on with that lamp over there, so uh, let me fix that for you real quick. There we go, so with the output line moved over here, let's see what happens when I push this button. And there you go, you can see that the lamp blinks. So essentially, I push the button, which in itself is a pulse, which means an on and then an off, and the exact same thing happens over there. Interesting. Except it's not really the exact same thing. As you can see when I push this button, the pulse of the button is much longer than the pulse experienced by that lamp over there. So it's obviously being shortened. So as it turns out, that's exactly what a monostable circuit does. It takes in a pulse and then it outputs a pulse. But why? I mean, surely this isn't much different than what a redstone line does, right? When it blinks. So what's really the point of this? In order to answer that question, let's see what's going on under the hood. Okay, so what we've revealed here is a very strange circuit where we have a line going into the back of this comparator. This thing turns on after one redstone tick. And then shortly thereafter, because this is on two redstone ticks, it gets canceled because this here is in subtract mode. So to give you a clear picture of what's going on, there you go. You can see that the resulting redstone line out there flashes really fast. Now the magic of this system reveals itself when you put in a different type of input, like a wooden button. So if you weren't aware, a pulse from a wooden button is much longer than that from a stone button. You can kind of see if I push them back to back like this. You can see that the wooden button lasted a lot longer. So let's compare the pulse length of this output line between these two buttons. So this one, the stone button, okay, pretty fast, and then the wooden button, also pretty fast. And of course, that makes a lot of sense because this contraption right here ensures that this comparator is locked with the exact same timing in between, no matter how long the pulse in the back here is. In fact, you can even put a lever down and then turn it on in order to activate that pulse over there. And therein lies the final detail of the monostable circuit. Yes, it is a circuit that takes a pulse as an input and then outputs a pulse as well, but the key is that the resulting pulse length is always the same, regardless of the length of the input pulse. And as a side note, monostable circuits exist in real life as well. The name refers to the fact that these circuits have one and only one stable state, hence monostable. In redstone, I interpret this one stable state as the off state, and then the incoming redstone pulse is what pushes it to its unstable state of on, but then, since on is an unstable state, it quickly reverts back to its stable state of off. So at a base level, that's exactly what a monostable circuit is, but of course, this isn't the only design out there that exists, and we'll get into a few of the others just over here. Now this right here is a truly ancient design for a monostable circuit. So uh, if you take a peek down here, you can see that this is a sticky piston. So when you push this button right here, it lights up this piece of redstone, which powers this block and this sticky piston at the same time. And then of course this sticky piston pushes up and pushes this block out of the way. But because this block was powered for a very brief period of time, that actually gets picked up by this repeater over here and blinks this light. So you can see that happening right there. And over here, we have another very simple design. You see this redstone dust is going into this block, which is powering this dropper, which is facing up into a hopper. This dropper, of course, contains some sort of random junk item. So what happens is it gets spat into this hopper, which gets read by this comparator. But of course, because this hopper is pointing downward, it returns straight back into the dropper and this light will turn off, just like so. And over here, we have another very old design for a monostable circuit. We have a redstone dust going into this block, which will turn off this torch in one tick, and then turn on this repeater in three ticks. 
So you can see that this line will turn off and then it will turn back on after two more ticks. So basically this right here is two ticks. That gets picked up by this torch right here, which will blink on, no, sorry. It will blink, yeah, it will blink on and then back off. And that'll be reflected in that lamp over there. So when I click this button, you can see that it briefly flashes. Now we're gonna move on to another old but slightly clunky design. You can kind of see here that this repeater is powering this block, which will power this piece of redstone and this piston at the same time. But because this piston takes a little bit of time to actually extend this block and block this redstone line over here, this will actually make its way over here before it gets chopped off. So you can see right there that light blinks for a very short period of time when I click this button. And of course, there's the more modern way to do it, which is just to push an observer. Now, if you weren't aware, when an observer is moved, it will actually activate. So basically, you push this button. Oh wait, hold on, let me rotate that. So yeah, when you click this button, it extends this piston, and then that observer fires. Couldn't be simpler. Now, all of these that I just showed you, including the one back there, are examples of what are called rising edge monostable circuits, which just refers to the timing of when the pulse is generated. So you can see that in all of these designs, the pulse is generated in the on portion of the incoming pulse. This is a lot easier to see if I replace all these buttons with levers. So you can see that when I flick these levers on, you'll see the resulting pulse in all of these designs. But when I turn them off, you can see no pulse at all. That's what makes it rising edge. And of course, with something called rising edge, there is its opposite, which is falling edge, which is right over there. So as you may have guessed, falling edge is when the pulse is generated in the off portion of the incoming pulse. In basically all monostable circuit designs, this can be easily achieved by simply inverting the input. So as you can see, this button is attached to this torch, which is essentially inverting it. And when I click this button, there you go. You see that the pulse is generated when this button turns off, but not when it turns on. Same thing, of course, goes with this one. But with this observer design, you can do it a little bit differently. So instead of inverting the input, you can simply change where the output is. As you can see, when this is pushed away, it does nothing. And then when it's pulled back in, that's when it generates the pulse. All right, so we had rising edge over there, falling edge over here, but there's also another one. You can have both, and that's called dual edge monostable circuits. And that is just over here. So here we have a slight variation of the rising edge that we saw over here, except instead of just a straight redstone line here, we have a repeater. So you can see that since this has a delay on it, well, I'll just go ahead and show you instead of telling you, you can see that a pulse is generated on both the rising edge and the falling edge of this button press. But of course, why do all of this over engineering when you can just use an observer? I mean, of course, this thing is able to detect this redstone line turning on and turning off. So there you go. You have a built-in dual edge monostable circuit. So now that you have some insight into what monostable circuits are and how they work, it still might be a bit hard to imagine how such a thing can be useful. So I'll show you a couple of examples, starting with the one tick pulse. Now, fair warning, this feature is a Java edition exclusive. So when you feed a one tick pulse into a piston, a sticky piston actually, it will actually spit out its block. And then if you feed into it again, it'll actually pull it back in. So you get a toggle like so. Of course, this also works with the observer design, as you can see here, and with the falling edge observer design, as you can see right here. Now let's take a look at a couple of larger examples. All right, so here we are in the Skulk Telegraph world. If you happen to miss that video, you can catch it in the top right. But yeah, basically this machine works by sending pulses through the air from this machine over to that machine. And the way that the pulse gets to this line of observers is it goes through just basically this redstone line here. And in order for this line of observers to not be double activated, this pulse here needs to be pretty short. 
And in order to do that, I've made use of our old friend here, the Rising Edge old school monostable circuit here. You can see that I simply have a redstone line running into here, and then we have our thing that I showed you before, gets picked up by repeater, and then the one tick gets propagated right down to this line and make sure that this line of observers doesn't double activate. And check this out, over here on the receiving end as well, I've made use of a monostable circuit here. So you can see this piston with an observer on its face. Basically its job is to convert this long pulse that is generated by the skulk sensor into a short one that is picked up by this hopper here and then forwarded into this line of observers right there. So you can see that only generates a short pulse on that line right there. And again on the receiver, we have yet another monostable circuit over here, which is responsible for blinking this shift register over here. So as you can see, when a message comes through like so, it'll start pulsing this line with very short pulses, which is then converted to two ticks, yada yada, you get it. The point is, monostable circuits are used absolutely everywhere, so learning what they are and how they work will unlock your redstone engineering potential in a huge way. So here's your homework. I just showed you a few common designs for monostable circuits, but they're not the only ones that you can make. Not by a long shot. So see if you can create a completely original monostable circuit design of each type. Rising edge, falling edge, and even dual edge. And also search for monostables in other people's redstone builds. It'll get you to be more familiar with how they're practically used in redstone design. So with that, I hope you're a little more familiar with what the heck a monostable circuit is. If you learned something, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more redstone guides like this. Alright, see ya!